Hey everyone, welcome back to QuantProf. Today we are going to solve a problem asked in an Acuna Capital online assessment. Check the description for more quant interview resources. Let's look at the problem. We have an n cross n square grid. We fill each cell in the grid with either 0 or 1 in such a manner that the sum of numbers in each continuous 2 cross 2 subgrid sums up to 2. What is the number of ways we can fill up the n cross n grid? For example, in the following 4 cross 4 grid, each of these subgrids must have sum equal to 2. Pause the video here if you want to give it a try. Let's look at the solution. Suppose we fill the first row. Notice these two columns. The values in the next row for these columns must both be 1. Similarly, the values in the subsequent rows for these two columns also get fixed. Now, consider this 2 cross 2 subgrid. Three values are already fixed, so the fourth value is also determined. By the same logic, the entire grid gets fixed once we fill the first row. However, this holds true only if the first row is not alternating. If the first row is alternating, for example, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, the next row can either be 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, or 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. Thus, we have two options for the next row. The same logic applies to all subsequent rows. So in this case, we will have two raised to the power n minus 1 options to fill the grid after the first row is fixed, unlike the previous case where there was only one way to fill the entire grid. Hence, if the first row is alternating, there are two raised to the power n minus 1 ways of filling the remaining rows. There are two ways to make the first row alternating. You either fill it with 0, 1, 0, 1, and so on, or 1, 0, 1, 0, and so. Hence, the total number of grids with the first row alternating are 2 into 2 raised to the power n minus 1, which is equal to 2 raised to the power n. On the other hand, if the first row is not alternating, there is only one way of filling the remaining rows. Uh, there are two raised to the power n minus two ways to make the first row non-alternating. Hence, the total number of grids with the first row non-alternating are two raised to the power n minus two. Hence, the total number of grids is two raised to the power n plus two raised to the power n minus two, which is equal to two raised to the power n plus one minus two. Now let's look at a different problem that was asked in a jump trading interview. Consider a 3 cross 100 grid, initially filled with zeros. You can repeatedly perform the following operations. Choose a row and set all its cells to zero, or choose a column and set all its cells to one. Determine the number of distinct grid configurations that can be produced using these operations. Try to solve this on your own. We hope you liked the video. If you are serious about excelling at quant interviews, we invite you to check out our course, Quant Interview Masterclass, where we cover the entire theory and over 1,000 high-quality problems, including firm-specific problems from recent interviews. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Until then, Godspeed.